category of Soul Spoken Word, Emily Dawson from South Georgia. So to get right to the point today, I have a little game I'd like for y'all to play. It's called, How Many Teenagers Do You Know That Are Actively Pursuing a Life of God? For many of us, that game doesn't last very long. Like a banging on the gong, the preacher say, what's wrong with kids today? And the song goes on and on and on. But the song being sung is partly true. You see, we're surrounded by a generation who, for the most part, would rather smoke a joint than sit in a pew. And to be honest, I'm really tired of placing all the blame on them. So I'm here to suggest, church, that part of the problem is you. Please hear me out. You see, teenagers today, and people for that matter, would rather live by their own luck because they see the religious system is just way too stuck. And if we have this perception that we are so full of pride, then maybe it's time we take a look inside and try to reclaim the part of Jesus that some of us have lost. The one who partied with sinners, touched the lepers, and who paid the highest cost. Have you ever considered just how many parties Jesus went to in the Gospels? If someone were to throw a party today, church, I'm not sure they would hire us. People don't want to gather around Jesus anymore. They gather around Lady Gaga and Miley Cyrus. And I'm not here to bash secular music either. I'm tired of that. And plus, I like some of those songs. I'm merely suggesting that we also might be in the wrong. Please hear me out. You see, it's clear in the lives of the next generation that the church rarely plays a part. And maybe that's because some of the messages on TV and film and radio are a little bit more from the heart. Church should not be this billboard propaganda, a list of should not, shoulds and should nots. It should be a living and breathing art piece where people see us and they say, I want what they've got. When did the movement of Jesus lose its authenticity? And requires members to climb some spiritual peak. Because if only the strong survive, how come his power is perfect when we are weak? Now please hear me out. I know some churches do this right. And I'm not trying to start a fight. I'm merely suggesting that we might be just as blind as those whom we are trying to give sight. We as a church need to wisen up because the next generation is rising up. And they're finding their prize in the things of this world because in their eyes we haven't given them a better option. Running away from the church like a toxin because some of us are locked into a system of judgment and dismay. They dislike you if you're struggling, different, or gay. Why would anyone want to stay when they are just viewed as a project on which we can project a list of rules? And the more we try and protect the children in this way, the more we reject what God is trying to project through them. And that is his project of authentic love. Please hear me out. You've made it this far. I'm not trying to be harsh. And I'm not trying to be condemning to either side. I'm merely suggesting that instead of forcing people on a some religious journey, that we just invite them along for the ride. Let's look to share before we look to teach. And maybe let's put a little more care into what we preach. Let us make faith in Jesus a little more attractive. And by that, I'm not talking about hip or cool. I'm talking about interactive. Because you can never underestimate the power of someone who truly cares and who dares to be the one person who will listen when no one else will. This is the kind of love I believe Jesus was talking about. That love that spurs us to a life that people can't help but be attracted to. Church, let us begin to live in that love. And let us stop blaming the younger generation for every problem in this world and instead come alongside them and invite them on an adventure that Jesus said would bring even greater things yet to come. This is authentic love.